Welcome back to another episode of 40 Facts About the 40K Universe. I am your host, Gersh One, and you are watching One Mind Syndicate. Today, we talk about the Imperium, specifically the Emperor, as we talk about his golden throne. This is a viewer request, so if you have any requests, please comment them down below. But let's get into 40 Facts About the Golden Throne. The core of the device that would become the Golden Throne, whose exact origin during the Dark Age of Technology is currently unknown, was discovered by the Emperor sometime in the 30th millennium, during the Unification Wars on Terra, buried deep under the huge and inhospitable desert on the continent of Asia. The original use that the Emperor found for the Golden Throne, or the core device that the throne was later constructed around, was that it could serve as a webway portal based on Terra. Prior to the outbreak of the Horus Heresy, and over a period of several centuries, the Emperor directed tens of thousands of Mechanicum tech priests into modifying the throne so it could be put into use as the nexus of his secret webway project. This project was intended to open up the Eldar webway to mankind by establishing a portal into its galaxy-spanning network from Terra. This would provide a means of instantaneous interstellar travel between the worlds of the newborn Imperium of Man, making navigation through the dangers of the warp unnecessary and literally connecting all the branches of mankind instantaneously. The Emperor believed that this level of unity would be necessary if humanity was truly to thrive and prosper in such a dangerous universe. Slightly over two standard centuries into the Great Crusade, the Emperor of Mankind decided to leave the direct leadership of military affairs to his sons, the Primarchs, and return to Terra to oversee the construction of an administrative apparatus that could fairly govern the new interstellar Imperium he had created. He also personally took work on the Golden Throne. The whole project was placed under the utmost secrecy, and even the Primarchs had no idea of what exactly the Emperor was doing in the seclusion of his laboratories deep beneath the Imperial Palace. This secrecy would personally wound many of the Primarchs and create a grievous that would later be exploited by the ruinous powers of Chaos. To learn more about the schisms between these two factions, please check out our 40 facts on the Horus Heresy series. While the Emperor worked on the Webway project, Malkador the Sigilite, the Emperor's most trusted advisor, was named as the Regent of Terra, and the First Lord of the Governing Council of Terra, who would lead it in the Emperor's absence. The Fabricator General of the Mechanicum, Chief Custodian of the Ligo Custodis, Constantine Valdor, and the leaders of the Astropaths and Administrative Divisions of the Imperium were appointed to the Council of Terra. Having established the new governing body of the Imperium, the Emperor then retreated to his private subterranean vaults beneath the Imperial Palace to initiate his new secret project. Soon, the events of the Horus Heresy unfolded, and the Emperor's loyal Primarchs and the servants awaited for his attention. After many long months, Malkador and the Imperial Fist Legion's Primarch, Rogodorn, were finally granted an audience with the Master of Mankind. The Emperor finally explained to his loyal servants about the existence of the Imperial Webway Project. This new human-controlled extension into the webway would recreate the vast network of war portals that would once bound together the ancient interstellar empires of the Old Ones and the Eldar. However, the warp gate the Emperor had constructed and the short sections of webway passage required constant maintenance, lest they fall into ruin. At first, this demanded only a small portion of the Emperor's psychic might and so he was able to command his armies and do all that was expected of him as emperor. But the hideous monstrosities that ruled the warp, the self-proclaimed gods of chaos, had ever been his foe, and now conspired to subvert the emperor's goal, as they had since the day he had launched the Great Crusade. To this end, they had tempted the naive Magnus the Red to warn him of the very plot they had initiated, the betrayal of the Imperium by Horus, Magnus had sent his warning by means of powerful psychic sorcery, and his broadcast had wrecked havoc upon the protective psychic shield surrounding the Emperor's fragile webway construct. 
The spell of Magnus not only allowed the foul denizens of the warp entry to the section of the webway the Emperor's secret army of adepts and tech priests had by then conquered, it destroyed the delicate controls the Emperor had set in place. Now the warp gate he had constructed required virtually all of his psychic power and mental concentration to maintain unless it ripped open a permanent doorway between Terra and the warp flooding the homeworld of mankind with the demonic legions of the ruinous powers. Apparently the core of the golden throne device survived the disaster, or was repaired following the catastrophic events by the Mechanicum Adepts, but the Emperor's Imperial Webway project lay in ruins, and before the project could be restarted, the Horus Heresy erupted and the forces of chaos laid siege to Terra itself. The war within the webway soon went badly for the forces of the Emperor, even though at first the army of the Ligo Custodis and their supporters, the Silent Sisterhood, had managed to push back the demonic invaders, they continued to take many casualties. The Imperial forces had never had the advantage of numbers and each death weakened them, whereas the demons appeared to have a numberless horde at their disposal, despite thousands of demons and their allies having been destroyed or banished back into the warp, there were always thousands more to take their place. As the battle within wore on, the demon began to gain the advantage. Their assaults regularly reached deep into the Imperial defenses, more than once approaching dangerously close to the human-built conduit that led to the warp gate of the Golden Throne. On one occasion, a mighty bloodthirster, greatest of the demons of Khorne, fought its way through the Imperial defenders to the gate itself, and only the last-minute intervention of Sister Celia Haroda of the Sisters of Silence was able to stop the beast from crashing through the warp gate and into the dungeon of the Imperial Palace. Sister Celia confronted the huge demon, her presence chilling the air around it and stiffening its otherworldly powers, and silently she dispatched the monster with a swift stroke from her blade of frost. The effort utterly exhausted her, and with the final banishing stroke of her sword, she collapsed upon the threshold between the warp and Terra's real space, never to breathe again. The death of Sister Celia was but one of many acts of brave sacrifice by the loyal warriors of the Emperor within the Terran expansion of the webway. Eventually, after many long solar days of bloody battle, these deaths took their tolls, and the defenders were forced to draw back within the sight of the Golden Throne. Here they were bolstered by the psychic presence of the Emperor, who appeared as a brightly burning sun to those within the alien conduit. The Emperor drew on his vast reserve of psychic powers and his star burned even brighter. The demons unwilling to approach the shining Nimbus were held back. The star of the Emperor gave the defenders respite enough that many were able to cross through the portal and retreat into the Imperial Palace. At first, all the tech priests and workers were evacuated, and then, reluctantly, the Silent Sisterhood and the Custodian Guard withdrew from the battle and into the palace dungeons. The gate would remain closed to the demons for as long as the Emperor was able to power it from his arcane technological throne atop the Golden Portal. Only the mightiest of psychers had enough power to do this, and even then, most would be exhausted and fail in a short time. Only the Emperor had the might to keep the gate closed permanently, and even for him, the effort grew harder as the demonic forces gathered around him, for as long as the demon hordes threatened the breach, the portal, the golden throne would be his prison. By this time, the traitor Horus had pushed all the way through to the gates of Terra. The Emperor had no choice but to confront his son. Malkador the Sigilite sat on the golden throne in order to allow the Emperor to confront his son. The Emperor was able to kill his son, but at a terrible cost. When Rogodorn brought the mortally injured ruler of mankind back to the Golden Throne, after he had defeated Horus, Dorn found Makador sitting wasted, psychic energy lashing across his shriveled body, tortured by the psychic bombardment of the collapsing Imperial Webway. He was almost dead when the tech priest made the exchange, disengaging Malkador from the strange machine, even as they moved to modify it to support the Emperor's crippled life. 
As Malkador was removed from the device, the last flickering of life left him and the dust of his corpse blew across the stone floor. Malkador managed to prove one final time his loyalty and love for the Emperor, for despite his ordeal and agony, he had still managed to gather what remained of his wasted power and willingly forsook it to feed the Emperor and allow his master to survive. Malkador's final sacrifice allowed the Emperor to awake from his coma briefly and give his servants, including the Primarch Rogodorn and Jangatai Khan, their final orders before being interned silently for the next 10,000 standard years within the modified life support system of the Golden Throne. Poor, brave Malkador the hero. He reserved a fragment of his strength for me. It gives me little time to pass final words to you. If you do as I ask, then I shall not wholly die. My spirit, at least, will survive. My injuries are severe, more so than I hoped, but less than I feared. My psychic powers will return to me in time, but my body will never heal. I shall never walk amongst you again. I am now bound to this machine for all of time. My faithful bodyguard and attendants know what is required. You must do as they request. Dorn and Jagtai, you have much work to do. Though the head of the serpent has been destroyed, its coils still choke the safety of mankind. You and your loyal brothers must fight on. Cleanse the taint of treachery from our stars. Never again must we allow the ruinous power of chaos to have such a chance. Now all of you go. You know your duties. Execute them well. The universe has many horrors yet to throw at us. This is not the end of our struggle. This is just the beginning of our crusade to save humanity. Be faithful, be strong, be vigilant. From the Golden Throne, the Emperor would maintain the psychic beacon of the Astronomicon as a replacement for the now lost Imperial Webway Project and do his best to shield humanity from the worst terrors of the Immaterium. Through the sacrifice of Malkador, mankind would live on and its peoples would face the growing darkness of the age of the Imperium that was about to dawn with a single chant upon his lips. The Emperor protects. And those were 40 facts about the Golden Throne. Now please subscribe to the channel because there's a part 2. It's going to be a really short part 2 but it's going to explain what the Golden Throne is like in today's time in the 40k universe. Um, so please subscribe to the channel to get that if you're already a subscriber thank you for liking commenting and sharing as you know we post warhammer videos every single day so please help us out by commenting and sharing this video thank you so much for listening this was gersh one with one mind syndicate signing out